Today I want to show you a really neat trick that I do for some very simple caching. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and this is Demos with Angular. Today I want to show you a really neat trick that I use, which is whenever you're making a HTTP request, there's a very simple way to use local storage to cache those requests. We're going to start out by building an application. We're going to then use observables in the HTTP client library to pull some data down from the internet. And then we're going to use a subscription and local storage in order to supply these things back to the user, even before the request is completed from the internet. All right, so let's get started. So as usual, I'm starting with a standard Angular application that was created with the CLI with ng-new. And so our plan today is to pull some data off of GitHub using the HTTP client library that's built in Angular. Uh, and we're going to take a look at why this HTTP client library is coming back as an observable and some of the things that you can do with that, such as doing fast HTTP caching uh, that can make your application load faster, give users better experience, uh, or even do something like work offline for the first time. So we've got a standard Angular CLI app, so we care about the source slash app folder. And we're going to do all of our work in the app component today. So let's clear out the app component HTML and all of the local variables in our app component uh, and just make sure that this is fresh and ready to get started. So let's go ahead and add an H1 to this page just so that we know what page we're looking at and that everything is working great. Uh, and then let's design out the template for what we want to be rendering. So we're going to want to render an array of divs uh, and then let's just fetch some data from GitHub such as a list of repositories. So uh, we're going to have a set of divs where we're gonna have a list of repos and each repo will just render out the name. So we're gonna use the ng-for syntax, let repo of repos, and we're gonna use the async pipe uh, because repos is going to be a observable of array of repositories. And so if we want the repos variable to exist, uh, we need to actually define it here. So let's go ahead and add a constructor and we're gonna use dependency injection to add the HTTP client. Uh, to our application. This is what will allow us to make HTTP requests from the internet and get those back as observables. We can import that from at angular slash common slash HTTP. And now if we're going to use the HTTP client library, we actually need to also provide this as part of our app module. And so we're going to import the HTTP client module from angular common HTTP. And then we will add that to the imports of our app. It doesn't need any sort of configuration, so we should be good to go at this point. Um, and now the HTTP client that we inject should actually work perfectly. So let's define a member variable on this component called repos. That's the observable that we are referring to in our template. And let's go and fetch that data from the internet. And so one of my favorite APIs is actually on GitHub. So, because I just can remember the URL. So I, I hit api.github.com slash search slash repositories, and I pass it a query of Angular. Uh, and this API is rate limited, but it's also very easy to access. And so we're just gonna fetch a list of repositories that match the term Angular. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually define that observable for our repos array. And we're gonna use http.get, um, because http.get is generic. I can actually supply a type here, um, but I'm gonna turn that off just for now and just call it any. Uh, and then I'm gonna pass it the path that we defined. And so here we're not actually making the call, we're just defining the observable. Uh, the call will actually only be made when we subscribe to it in the template. So if we actually look at the shape of the API that we're querying, uh, we're getting back an object, but the thing we want out of this object is the items array. So we actually need to do a little bit of data manipulation. Uh, we could do this in the template by saying access to the items property directly, uh, but we can also do it in our component uh, just to get out the items array. So we're going to use RxJS, we're going to use the map operator in order to uh, kind of massage the data as it's coming down from the internet. So what we're doing is we're getting out from the data the data.items property. And now if we take a look at our template again, we're going to see uh, all of our references are correct because repos now exists. Um, and let's actually clean up the rendering of how we want to show this repository to users. So uh, if we look into the repos JSON content, we're going to see there's lots and lots of fields we can access, such as images, such as comments, etc. Uh, but I want actually the description property. Let's just make sure this exists. Uh, yes, so it's, it's just going to be repo.description to get out a description 
So we can say repo.description, and then let's make uh, give this a header so that it's a little bit cleaner so you can see what's going on. And then we will just render out the repo.description instead of the repo.description with JSON encoding. So we take a look at our application and everything seems to be working perfectly. Um, so this is a normal HTTP request. This is how you normally fetch data from a RESTful API in Angular. Uh, so now let's jump back to our component and in the TypeScript side of things, let's add this very simple caching and let's take a look at why this is an observable. So if we wanna understand the network um, of this application, what's happening is when I load this page, we are creating a network request as soon as the template loads to repositories and then we're going to be rendering that to the screen. And so if you slow down the network, what we'll see is that the application is gonna bootstrap and load and render our template even before the repositories list is available. And so the user actually gets this blank loading. And what we can do is we can use the power of observables to overcome this. So we've got our repos observable and we're gonna do two things. So first we're gonna to subscribe to that repos observable and we're gonna save it. We're gonna persist that data into local storage. And so the nice thing about local storage is that it actually survives across different loads. And so if we just subscribe to this observable, so I'm going to take in everything that that HTTP request is gonna emit, and I'm gonna store it into just the browser's local storage. So we actually want to give this a key so that we can ensure that we're using it in the same way consistently, because we're gonna to refer to this local storage in a couple of places. So we've got this HTTP cache, and let's put this at the application level and make it a constant, because uh, we've got this nice uppercase syntax. Now the thing to know about local storage is that it actually needs to be a string. So everything that we get back from this API, it's gonna be a JSON object, and so we need to actually serialize that into a string. Um, and then when we fetch the data from local storage, we're gonna make sure that we need to deserialize this application. So now every time HTTP requests are being made, we are storing that directly into local storage, and rendering it to the screen. So there's there's effectively kind of uh, two subscriptions here. Next, we wanna go ahead and actually use this local storage data. And so we're gonna do this with another very powerful RxJS operator called start with. And what start with does is it takes an observable, which is a stream of events, and it adds an event at the very beginning. Um, so basically it's gonna synchronously emit whatever you give it with the start with operator. And so let's take, uh, let's redefine this dot repos by saying this dot repos equals this dot repos dot start with. And so we're, we're using this start with operator to add an additional event to our observable. So normally an HTTP request is only going to have zero or one emissions, um, but because we're adding this start with, it's going to have uh, one extra emit. And so we're just going to JSON parse our local storage based on the key we defined. Um, and if the key doesn't exist, we will just JSON parse an empty array. And so with these two very small changes, we are caching all of the data that comes back from HTTP, and we are adding an uh, event to our repos observable so that when we listen to it in our HTML, when we listen to it in our component, we are always going to get back a copy of it from local storage or whatever we have in cache, and then that cache will automatically be replaced with the HTTP request from the internet. If we take a look at the local storage, um, because this has been refreshing in the CLI uh, via the ng-serve method, it's been refreshing in the background, we can see that we're actually already caching all this data. So uh, as soon as we refresh, all of this data should be live, all of this data um, should be available to the application even before the network request completes. And there it is. So even though our repository is observable or our HTTP request has not yet completed, the data is all there and our application is cached and working much, much faster now. We don't need that extra round trip to the internet. And so the, the final magic piece here is that if, for example, um, if you're using a service worker and that service worker was caching all of the Angular application files, such as your index file, your vendor.js, your main.js, all these sorts of things, uh, the repository's data would still be available from local storage. And so not only would my application work offline, all of these uh, cached and saved data would work offline as well, um, meaning that we have a more robust application that works offline uh, and hopefully can deliver more value for our users and a better experience. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.